Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy Peters of the Court Street United Methodist Church in downtown Flint. Today I'm coming to you from the Parsonage as we continue our series, Isn't It Ironic? In this series, we're looking at some of the most ironic moments and stories in the Bible. And we're discovering that the irony in the Bible is an important part of the message of the Bible. Last week, we learned that one meaning of irony is a situation in which the truth is the opposite of what it appears to be. And we find an excellent example of that sort of irony right in the early pages of the Bible, in the story of the Tower of Babel. Now, the story in Genesis chapter 11 begins like this. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and fire them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And so here is the setup of the Tower of Babel story. The people of Babel have decided that they're going to make a name for themselves. They're going to build a tower that reaches all the way up to heaven. And if you know what has already happened in the pages of the book of Genesis, then you know that this is a terrible idea. We've already heard a story about Adam and Eve eating a piece of fruit that they thought would make them like God. And we know that instead, that fruit led them to disaster and separation from God. That's the Bible's first example of irony, by the way. And we know that God has commanded the people not to stay in one place, but to explore the world and to fill the world. And we can sense that there is something sinister about this project. Once again, the people are disobeying God and trying to take the place of God. And so they start this major building project. And they construct a tower that seems to them to be absolutely enormous. And it's only in the next verse that we discover the irony in this story. In Genesis chapter 11, verse 5, we read these words. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. Did you get the irony? Did you catch the joke? The humans, the mortals, have made this tower that seems to them absolutely enormous. They have constructed this thing that they are so immensely proud of this thing that they believe will make them like God. And what does God say? Well, I suppose I might as well go down and see it. To God, this tower is so insignificant. In reality, this tower is so very small that God can't even see it from heaven. God quickly puts an end to the people's prideful project and scatters them throughout the earth. And this story establishes a pattern that continues throughout the Bible. In the pages of Scripture, over and over, we meet villains and enemies who believe that they are powerful enough to challenge God. And over and over again, God dismisses that challenge with a word and a wave. In the New Testament, we read about wicked King Herod, the same King Herod who sent Jesus to be put on trial by Pontius Pilate. The same Herod who persecuted the apostles and executed James, the brother of John. The book of Acts tells us that one day, when King Herod was being praised by a great crowd of people who were comparing him to a god, Herod was suddenly eaten by worms and died. Herod was not so godlike after all. And in the book of Revelation, we read about a vision in which John the Revelator sees all the kings of the earth gathering their armies at a place called Armageddon to do battle against the servants of God. 
But when all of those armies are assembled, a trumpet sounds, and a voice calls out, It is done. And just like that, the enemies of God's kingdom are defeated, not in some great battle, but with a single word and a wave of God's hand. All of these moments of irony repeat the same message over and over again. No matter how scary the powers of this world might be, no matter how much power the villains of this world might claim, the truth is that all of them are no more powerful than the man behind the curtain pretending to be the Wizard of Oz. They could never hope to build even so much as a stairway to heaven, let alone stand in opposition to God. In these stories, the Bible is using irony to tell us that those who serve and love God have nothing, not one thing in this world, to fear. Let's pray. God of irony, you claimed victory over the Tower of Babel and over King Herod and over all of the armies of all of the kings of this earth. Help us to remember that often the truth is the opposite of what it appears to be, that we might not live in fear. Through Jesus, the Carpenter King, we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for spending some time with us today. You can find a new devotion right here at the same time next week. Until then, keep on laughing.